my name is Ramsey and welcome back to Cobalt Core. Time to go in with our newly unlocked ship, that being the Gemini. We unlocked this in the last episode for having a crew win that has Isaac hacked. Well, it doesn't have to have had these characters, it just explicitly needs to have not had Dizzy Riggs or Perry. And we did that on the hardest difficulty as well, so I will be staying on the hardest difficulty for the moment. <clears throat> Gemini. A powerful ship with dual cannons and missile bays, which cycle after each card played. It starts with warp prep for a single shield and evade on the first turn, as well as a Gemini core. After you play a card, toggle both your active cannon and missile bay. So I'm thinking, if I want to give myself the, the, the breadth of utility this seems to offer for targeting missiles, drones, and normal shots against different parts of the enemy body, I'm definitely going to want Isaac. So let's tag in Isaac. Isaac is coming along. I feel like I'm also going to need to worry individually about my defense. Hmm. And about my cannon usage as well. I could use Drake rather than Perry. And there's a little bit of utility in that, in that Drake's base deck has a copy of a card that stuns. And if I'm alternating my cannons constantly, I, without the ability to move, have two different positions I'm capable of stunning. But I've also had Drake and Isaac in a bunch of recent runs together together. There's never a huge downside in having rigs, flexible movement, and card draw. But there's also a lot of movement available in Isaac to make up for it. Let's tag in Dizzy. I could honestly just take Perry. I would be more than happy with this squad at this point. And in fact, I'm taking Drake. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm taking Drake. Here's our core OS corruption. We are going to lose something at the start of this run. Two max hull, maybe. Definitely don't want to lose the max shield. Gaining a debris is not that bad. I would be able to burn the debris out relatively quickly. Hmm. And it's a card I would be able to use to just toggle between my cannons. Yeah, let's actually take the debris. Oh, and then I've got the option to remove two cards, so I can even remove the debris as well as probably a basic shot in this deck. Seems like a good idea. Remove a basic shot, and then remove debris. Come on. <laughs> okay, everyone, you know the drill. Uh, what's going on? Hey! Hey, intruder alert! Oh, you guys. So, whoop whoop, uh, alarm sounds, seize the intruder! Whoa, these time loops are getting weirder. You stupid time crystal must be doing a number on the time stream. How do you... Well, whatever. Now make yourself useful or inventing the Atmo and starting the loop over. Hey, did you guys know if you just pull the voltage limiters out of your consoles, you can get increased weapon output? Um... Alrighty then. Currently they're targeting our brittle cockpit. Definitely not going to be standing for that. Um, hmm. Looks like I'm probably still taking a hit against my ammo. Uh, ammo, rather, my armor this turn. I can heat sink to get out of the way without using my evade. I can use a block shot and an attack drone. I'll heat sink to get out of the way, alternating my things. Do you guys prefer the blue or the red side? I'm a blue guy. Red! Uh, hit him with the block shot. Alternating my things back, and then I can launch an attack drone in a position that will actually strike the enemy. I can lose both the temporary and current armor. We're good here. No damage. Ah, I can prevent the enemy from getting more armor, should I like here, with an EMP slug. And I suspect I do and would. 
move one space over to do so, and I should probably have some access to some basic dodge for a future turn as well. Hmm. How aggressive do I want to get here? I'm going to go with pretty aggressive. I'm going to move one space over, parallel shift in order to line up my cannon with the enemy's attack so that I can slug him. I've got two overheat at the moment, but that is a-okay. All I need to do is make sure that I have enough damage on the field to take out the enemy, and I can do so by using a single basic dodge, launching an attack drone, and then watching them shred the enemy. All right, converter, heat sink, and flex move. So, I was talking in a recent episode, uh, <laughs> in a recent episode, there's only recent episodes for this series so far. I was talking in an episode, I think last episode, maybe the episode before, about how we might find ourselves in positions now where, based on the starting decks, we make different decisions on the value of certain things. Like, flex move here. The upgrade flex move B, or even flex move A, like, it's... Mana equal to the amount of evade that you get. And it also gives you drone shift. So in a world where I don't have rigs, who has so much more easy access to evade, suddenly something like flex move is much more powerful than it otherwise might be. It is worth taking at a premium. Worth noting, that's what I'm about to do. Unless I want to go for the converter. It's also a way to do that. I simply take my armor, and then I don't have armor anymore. I have evade now. Hmm. No, I suspect flex move makes a bunch more sense for me. Ooh, I can even score an early upgrade. Love that. Oh, so it looks like I only have the fight me option when I have Drake on my squad, the hired mercenary. Interesting. Still not going to do that until I have a reasonably powerful setup. I do really like the idea of upgrading the attack drone to be attack drone mark A as early as possible. Also the EMP slug for a bunch more damage. Although EMP slug B, suddenly I'm in a position where I need to play heat sinks twice in order to not overload if I've played EMP slug twice, which is a bit, a bit, a uh, bit stiff. Definitely taking the attack drone upgrade. Event time. Hey, I have this extra scaffold lying around, and I think it'll look great right in the middle of your ship. Also, it's a great check right up. What do you think? Sure. Add an unshootable scaffold to the middle of the right ship part. Right to the middle of the ship part. Do I want to do that? It makes my ship longer. Hmm. Do I want to be longer? Five space is typically good, but also five spaces with a gap in it would allow me to line myself up more effectively. I think the, the tie break here is that with a single movement, having an unshootable scaffold to the right of the middle ship means I can go from taking brittle damage to something to taking no damage to something. Even if I reveal myself to other damage, I'm at least offloading that brittle effect. So sure. Looks, um, a bit better, I guess? No refunds. Time for an elite. Ooh. I'm gonna launch the attack drone. And then, I'm gonna flex move. Do I flex move or parallel shift? Actually, I'll parallel shift. I, I guess if I flex move, it's the same as parallel shift and basic dodge, because I would be using one of the drone ships to shift to the right. So I'll just play two cards instead. I will gain some additional dodge as well. So the game will take out two 
items, but nothing I'm especially concerned about. Um. Hmm. I can do three damage to the enemy with a heat sink and then an EMP slug, and I suspect that's what I should do. Corrupted core and basic dodge available here. I mean, I don't really need to move anything. This is the Drake bot, so I believe the status it inflicts will be over uh, burn, so I really don't want that. Which is going to make it difficult for me to really accomplish that much this turn. So I can like burn a corrupted core, fire a block shot straight through to the enemy, and then gain one more evade. And then roll out the round. We lose our Drone Mark 2, but it has already done more than enough damage. And also, by the way, welcome back Drone Mark 2. Uh, in the effort to keep that alive, I'll also use a flex move here to drone shift it over one space and move myself one space left. Oh, are we just leaving? Nice shot! Um... Hmm... Yeah, no, I already have the ability to just line myself up and take the shot. Don't need to overcomplicate things. Oh, wow. Some new cards. Let's have a look at Repair Kit. Repair Kit. Launch an object from your missile bay. The Repair Kit destroys? So, destroying it will heal the destroyer's hull, so we want to destroy it ourselves for two. Repair Kit B would summon that and then move it immediately four spaces to the right, or rather it would summon it four spaces to the right because it's not summoned into the same space. Or I can lower its cost. Interesting. I do want the ability to manage my health turn over turn, and that seems very valuable, but we also have radio control. All drones and missiles instantly take a turn. We can make that even zero cost. I, I just feel we have to take radio control. Prepped batteries. Gain an extra energy on the first turn, or nanofiber hull heal one after each combat. I gotta get that extra energy. It'll save me at least one health. And let's hunt our second elite as well. Ooh, this is fun. If I fire a basic shot, the enemy is gonna full dodge out of the way of that. I think I might take this turn just to generate resources. And start getting some drones out on the field. So I'll veer to the left, fire out a drone. And then I do want to get rid of Corrupted Core, but I also really want a Shield Surge and Basic Dodge, so I'll take those two instead. In terms of gaining more resources, that seems still like the right thing to do, so I'll move one space over, gain some basic block, allow the enemy to completely miss me. So if my drone tries to hit the enemy, they'll move entirely out of the way, which means they'll move two spaces over to the right here, and then they would fail to connect with my body. One way I can uh, exploit that here would be using radio control to force that shot right now. And then I can parallel shift the drone over so that it actually will hit the enemy. And I really want to do some damage, so I'm actually going to send the block shot as well.
Okay, so if I fire from my original cannon right now, in order for the enemy to completely dodge, they have to move three spaces to the right, which means they're lined up not to even be able to hit me with their own cannon. And if I want to be really aggressive here, and I do, uh, I do something like this. I send out an EMP slug against the enemy, and then... Oh, no. Never mind, this is actually completely fine, and it's also very aggressive, so... For some reason, I thought I was going to be able to summon another drone as well. Let's have the drone instantly take a turn to line the enemy up for my block shot. Oh, aggressive armoring, explosive slug, and scatter shot. Wow, scatter shot. Here with this deck. So scatter shot. Do one damage to the enemy directly ahead, then move them two spaces to the right, and then move yourself two spaces to the left. So like, if I fired this out of my right cannon, I'm basically just avoiding the enemy entirely. It's very expensive for the little damage it does. Of course, the upgrade can help rectify that by giving it two additional damage. I just wonder if I'm underestimating the power of aggressive armoring. Let's also have a very quick look. So, Gemini Core, after you play a card, so not after you attack, importantly, because after your attack would mean that Aggressive Armoring B would fire its first shot with one cannon and the second shot with a second cannon. <clears throat> that said, zero energy to four, do four damage. Three damage by base, of course. Scatter shot. The thing is, Scattershot isn't really different based on which cannon I fire it out of. It's still just moving the enemy and moving myself, as well as doing some amount of damage. I did want more damage in this deck, but then I already took a drone and then a radio control. So maybe I do want Scattershot. The ability to effectively just you know, fire upon the enemy with a bunch of drones, summon a bunch of drones, and then move the hell away. Let's do that, actually. We also pick up an artifact, the Stun Calibrator. After your first attack each turn, gain one stun charge. Hmm. I think I'm going to end this turn with a heat rather than use EMP slug and heat sinks because if I use flex move I can alternate my turrets and then if I move one space over with an evade I can use my EMP slug in order to cancel the only attack that would hit me and have the other two damage attack miss through my middle scaffolding. Also gets me some drone shift for future turns. I like it. Oh, if I'd managed to, there's a world where I could have stunned both of the enemy intents by using the stun one first and then block shot afterwards. I have to keep that in mind for the future. Um, yeah, unfortunately the enemy here is going to be giving me a card no where I am. Um, one thing I could do here actually is fire a basic shot in order to alternate and then fire a scatter shot. And in firing that scatter shot, I would prevent one of the cards being applied to me. But realistically, I think I probably just go for more resources by taking Corrupted Core, Basic Dodge, and Basic Block. Hmm. 
I only have to evade one to the left here in order not to be targeted. And I'll do that. I'll fire a single basic shot, use trash to alternate back, and then fire an attack drone who is going to represent my interests on the field to the tune of two damage. Let's do something similar again. Another attack drone goes out on the field, I'll fire a basic shot, take a basic dodge, and then I'm going to shift the drones over so they're both making contact here for 4 damage. Yeah, the early upgrade of the attack drone seems so transformative. Oh wow, radio control's really good when these are set up as well. Move one over, radio control. And in fact, the enemy is already dead. I'll take a basic shot and uh, burn the trash out of my deck, but then we get to watch them blow up. Seal, EMP, and block shot. Seal. Two instances of two piercing damage, one heat for your troubles. It's worth noting, Seal B upgrades to be piercing attack, stun, but Seal A would be the first attack, non-stunning, and then the second attack, stunning, and it's in the same line as well. So, Seer A would be a really good upgrade to take advantage of my stun calibrator. However, we also have EMP. So you set your shield to zero, and then you also set your enemy's shield to zero. Then you stun every intent on the enemy ship, and then you instantly end your turn. This is great. Okay, so if an enemy has like, you know, 20 armor, 20 block or something like that, right? I can just immediately EMP it away. But if I'm not doing it for that reason, I can also just leave my drones in front of the enemy. I EMP and then sure, you know, my turn's ended and the enemy's intents are all gone. But my drones are still connecting damage. Let's take EMP. And fight and elite with it. You, uh... Ever notice there's, like, a lot of robots around here? Yeah, what about them? The civilization that built them. It must have died out long before any of us got here. All these ancient war machines built to protect things long gone. It just feel like we're trespassing. Wow, yeah. Anyway, point is I already feel bad, so I don't feel worse for robbing you. Oh, perfect example. Oh, see the enemy's giant armor there. Oh, this is going to be so good. Okay. Wow, for real, actually. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Uh, okay. So, I move one space over to line up a weak shot. I'm going to launch the attack drone A, and then I'm going to EMP. No armor for the enemy, no armor for myself. I fire with the attack drone against the enemy's weak missile bay. I use a basic shot to alternate my cannons, then fire an EMP slug. Turn two, kill, get him. EMP really showing off its value right there. Ooh, what a field of choices. So payback, I'm immediately going to rule out. I don't think I want to get my ship hit in this build. I'm launching objects into the midline and dodging to avoid that. However, if I did, Payback would be good. Whenever the ship is hit, it immediately shoots a one damage attack. There's also bubble field. Apply a bubble shield to every mid row object. I mean, I only have one attack drone in the deck at the moment, but I do want to put more in. Speaking of, battalion. Three mana, launch offset to the left, summon one uh, attack drone. Launch offset to the right, another attack drone, and then directly ahead, a shield drone. We can upgrade it even to give attack drones mark two. I really feel like I want bubble field because it's easier, I think, for me to get more attack drones than it is to get bubbles. Hmm. And also I've played with battalion more than I have bubble field. 
So I'll let that be the break there. Gravel Recycler. Gain one temp shield every time an asteroid is destroyed. Or Drone Piercer. Drones that attack the enemy ship pierce. Yep. Let's upgrade. So EMP could lower its cost. Or it could not remove my shield. Interesting. Making things zero cost will help me format a better turn a lot more often. Bubble field, zero cost, or... Ooh, yeah! Ooh, with two drone shift on it as well. That's a lot. That's a, that's a very impactful upgrade versus, you know, flex move getting one more evade. I just wish I had another drone in the deck to start taking advantage of bubble field a lot more. I'm going to upgrade drone control first, then. These crystals. I, I have a theory about them. Uh, but it's kind of stupid. Go ahead. I think they're sort of like... The time loops... Immune system? Like, weird last nasty little germs that broke space-time. And it's... Trying to get rid of us? Oh, interesting. What data do you have to support this? Absolutely none. Ah, uh, yes. That's what we want to see, the attack drone on the first turn. I'm going to summon that, use parallel shift to move it one to the right. And then just fire two shots at the enemy. One basic, one block. Hmm. So if I apply a scatter shot against the enemy, and move them to right and myself to left, that's not what I want to do. Honestly, if anything, it seems like I just want to play flex move and then basic shot. move one space over to the left to avoid myself being damaged and obviously save my attack drone by drone shifting it one as well. Ooh, I've got the bubble field ready. Bubble field online. Oh, I don't have anywhere near as much dodge right now as I would want though. Probably not going to be able to play the bubble field for that reason. Let's use radio control. Shield surge, basic dodge, basic block. And then if I move one space over, I cause myself to take three less damage. Now I'm only taking two damage this turn. That's, that's accessible. Unfortunately, I didn't get my attack drone before I got radio control A. But hopefully I get it before the bubble shield. Oh no! Oh, the attack drone is in, in for a tough time. If I use Scattershot though, I can save it. Okay, let's use Radio Control and then Scattershot the enemy. Great. So now I'm taking two damage this turn. I can get a temp shield. So that I'm only taking one past the temp. And this keeps the attack drone alive for the possibility of a great big safe fun turn. Which it doesn't look like we're getting right now, unfortunately. Kind want to EMP this turn. Basically just passing a turn until I can get to attack drone and bubble field. I'm gonna do it. Okay, 
Okay, I'm going to put an attack drone out on the field. And then parallel shift them across. They're both going to line up for damage and also survive this. And then I even have the bubble field to play on them next. So I'm probably going to pay a, a pretty steep cost for doing this. Um, which so far looks like it's represented in taking two damage this turn. All I have to do is move one to the left. Three damage this turn. Um, I'll shield surge with some safety and take one hull after all is said and done. I really want to give them shields. But I can also just move them out of the way. Like, I could shield surge and then scatter shot and be pretty happy with this turn. big problem is that without Scattershot, I can't really change my fortune right now in terms of the damage I'm taking. Like, Shield Surge could protect me against two of it, and then I take one hull. Yeah, it's Shield Surge, Scattershot. Moves me out of range of the enemy. I still get to connect with one damage. from, Or rather, two damage from one of my drones. Ooh, opportunity beckons for even more damage on the enemy here. I'll take it. I fire a basic shot, lining up my EMP slug. So now I've only got one incoming damage and one temporary armor. And four more damage from my drones. One of them will die now, though. Next hand has another drone, though. Oh, perfect. Basic dodge, one to the left. Oops. Not what I wanted to do, but it's okay. Then summon the attack drone. Radio control through. They fight. I block. And we watch the drones take out the rest of the crystal. Handy. Rock factory, stun source, and serenity. Stun source would mean, like, my first attack stuns and then my second attack stuns as well. Like, it's it's pretty potent. But I'm not often directly shooting the enemy. I'm trying to get my drones to do that for me. Rock Factory will launch an asteroid at the start of every turn. That's a lot. That's more asteroids often than I will want. And it will make it much harder to line up safer turns for my own drones. I think it's Serenity. And I think it's only Serenity because Serenity is better than not good. Glass Cannon. Oh no. Gain one extra energy every turn. Your ship's cannons become weak at the start of combat. I don't think I can take that. That means I would have a weak, then a brittle, then a gap, then a weak again. That's so much extra damage that I would have to prepare to take. Simplicity on big up, remove three cards, and then prototype 22. Permanently gain plus one max shield on pickup. Gain one shield at the start of every turn. If shield was already full, take two hull damage. Perfect. Um, hey guys, you're killing it out there. And by it, I mean that big crystal monster. 
Always nice to meet the fans. I've been writing down crystal facts. Like, for example, did you know if you really step on one of them barefoot, it really hurts? Wow, oh, that's crazy. Ooh, baby. Look at that attack drone. You simply have to love that. Let's use Renity first. And I don't really want to lose the attack road immediately, so I'm probably going to move one space over before summoning the attack drone, using radio control to get it to fire instantaneously, and a basic block and a basic dodge to round out the turn. Oh yeah, I forgot, these are piercing! Hoi boy. I could keep my drone alive and still do damage with it if I use a scatter shot here. And in fact, if I use a basic shot first, I can even prevent the enemy from armoring up. That's fun. That's fun. Let's use a block shot instead. But. Ah. Right. Because <laughs> uh, yeah, the cannons alternate, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure, I forgot about that. I definitely forgot about that. Oops, oops, oops. It's fine. Uh, I can still shop, stop the enemy from getting more block here by using a shield surge and then... Being really sad because I caused myself two hull damage here. Oh, boy. Oh, no. EMP is going to be very helpful for that, but oh, boy. Oh, 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 that, that was a... Uh, that, oh, that was a turn. <laughs> Out of all of the turns I've ever had, that was definitely one of them. That's the only thing I can say. Oh, I did it again. Oh, no. I needed to take damage last turn. I can't take it to my weak spot, though. Um, I'm going to block shot... And then heat sink my way out so that I'm taking a hit against a nicer area here. Haha, -ha, see, it all works. I mean, it could just EMP the enemy. Sure, lose two of your own armor. Oh, never mind. I move one space over, I fire a basic shot, and then connect through with the slug for the kill. Okay, I need to be much more mindful of the downside I just took. Battalion, good to see you, especially now that I have a bubble in the deck. I'll take it. Uh, do I want to heal hull? No, I probably want to upgrade Battalion. Start getting attack drone mark twos out of them. Oh, I really want a battalion, but I guess I wouldn't be able to play battalion and bubble field on the same turn anyway. I think I'm just gonna gain resources and stand here. Block shot. That alternates my things.
Then if I shield surge, I go back and I can uh, prevent the missile. It's the original sign to prevent the missile. Uh... And then I would happily be able to take one hit, so I'd be able to move over one space as well. Alternatively, I'm effectively cancelling that summon if I use my attack drone instead. So I move one over and then shield surge so that I can summon up the basic drone the attack drone to fight the enemy in that line, doing two damage. I'll be taking two damage from the enemy and then I'll be back on uh, full hull, uh, full hull, full shield for the next turn. So I'll simply have to take a hit. Sure, I'll just scatter shot the enemy. And then burn a corrupted core, taking two damage. This also makes sure the enemy is not lined up with any of the missiles it's currently firing to really do that much to me. Ooh, there's the battalion, baby. Least intrusive way to use this. Oh man. I don't want to have to expend all of my resources to use it. But it's got to be the first card I play because I have no zero other cards in hand, so it's launching from my rightmost missile bay, so I've got to drone shift over and then move myself over in order to summon it. Whoa. No, I just realized that shield drone is going to give me enough shield that I take damage to... Oh, gosh. I need to proactively manage this Prototype 22 a lot more than I currently am. I could use the EMP to prevent it from actually ruining my life. Um... I'm going to parallel shift and then launch an attack drone out onto the field. And then happily take three damage here. I'm not even going to use the shield surge. If I use Scattershot, I can line up the radio control to go off. Sounds fun. So now the drone will instantly hit the enemy and the enemy's missile will instantly miss. And I'll gain another basic dodge for the end of that round. Oh, I feel so much safer now there's a Seeker drone on the field. So I know I'm going to be taking two damage to the Seeker Drone this turn, so I can move one over to the left. I can fire a basic shot. Summon an attack drone. Gain an additional dodge for a later turn, and then wait to take my two. And then Heatsink sets up perfectly for EMP Slug for the kill. Yeah, I might get Hull next time I get the option. Oh, Hot Compress, that doesn't count. Unfortunately, that doesn't count as Hull. 
It's three heat. What, I'd have to wait until I have Serenity specifically and then use this? Oh boy. Oh. It might still be worth it. I really need additional healing in this deck. I'm gonna take it. I'm mad about it. <laughs> Battalion in the uh, bubble field. Unfortunately, can't use both here. That's okay, though. I'm gonna gain an additional dodge this turn. Let's use dodge, then summon the battalion in an aggressive line here. And then I'm instantly gonna get them to take a turn so that I get four damage off on the enemy. Now, I need to make sure I take damage this turn. Can't play hot compress. Unless I'm ending the fight this turn, which I'm not. Uh, basic shot and flex move. It's probably the easiest way for me to... avoid a dire outcome here. So my shield drone will fire first. Prototype 22 says gain the shield at the start of the turn. If it was already full, take two dull hull damage. Not if you ever overflow your shield, take two hull damage. So I believe I will be safe here. Perfect. Uh, incoming this turn is three damage. Love to see that. Take a quick basic shot against the enemy. I'm probably just playing at Corrupted Core. And then just taking the three. If I evade one to the left, and then move the shield drone over... Then I can still take three, but I can do more damage. I want to do more damage. Heck, I could even fire the EMV slug right now, do three da three damage. Let's do it. Needs to get another attack drone out on the field. It can alternate with Serenity. Yeah, I put the attack drone out, and then in order to reveal myself to more damage, for safety's sake, uh, I'm going to heat sink. I lose a heat from that, and also I line myself up to take damage on my brittle area. Okay, I can prevent the three heat with the serenity charge that I have at, uh, at the moment, which is great. Four incoming damage this turn. that heat compress. That also shifts the toggle here, so I could take two damage this turn. That's actually a lot better. I also get to do three damage because of the EMP slug throwing out. Yep, nothing for it. Fire a basic shot, move one space over so the second cannon is lined up correctly, and fire another. Energy drone, mitosis! Oh, yes! So Mitosis says, at the start of your turn, lose one shield and gain twice as much temp shield. 
So that's going to be the thing that helps me offset prototype 22 as well as generate more useful statistic, uh, useful, uh, significant, significant and useful rather defense. Uh, we can upgrade mitosis to give us additional shield or to chomp two shield at the start of each turn. I'm pretty enthused about both these options, but I'm even more enthused to know that I have either of them. Ricochet Paddle. When you shoot an incoming missile, turn it around instead of destroying it or sub-zero heat stacks. Uh, heat can be reduced to negative three. So heat can be reduced to negative three gives me another opportunity to play heat compress. All I have to do is have a single heat sink played first. I think that's probably more valuable than Ricochet Pedal. And will give me more general access to the like recovery and healing, but offset by burning tool set that exists within Drake. Hey, Spike. Uh, we told that other guy he can't be Spike anymore. Uh, who? Uh, the other guy named Spike. We renamed him. Uh, okay. I really don't care. That attitude right there, that's why you're the real Spike. I don't understand pirate culture at all. Hey, see, here we're in the position where I can heat sink before the, the hot compress. And we'll be doing so as well. Heat sink across. Um, I'll fire a basic shot. Time for a hot compress. Mitosis. And then, do I want to alternate here before the next turn? Yes. Um, block shot would already save me against the incoming damage this turn. Not that I need to be saved against it, considering it's only two, which means I can just basic dodge and flex moves, so I'll do that. Just gain a bunch of resources, thank you. Okay, I've got an idea. I'm going to Serenity. Alternating and drawing. Oh, does that change my idea? Maybe it should. I can move one space over, summon an attack drone, and then bubble field it. And then the asteroid stays, and so does the attack drone. So incoming damage this turn for me is three. Whoa! Okay, so Seeker Missiles don't just deal their damage randomly. They deal their damage specifically to the nearest part that they were flying in the direction of. This is important because it means it can target brittle parts, which I otherwise did not think was the case. All good. I can use an oxygen leak to alternate here and then fire an EMP slug, preventing the enemy from summoning and also losing only my um, serenity there. Okay, I'm gonna line myself up to take the two damage against my two temporary, summon the attack drone for a second time, and now bubble everything! So now as soon as I can get everyone to move over to the left, we're gonna be great. Hmm. 
Game difficult. I need to start moving my drones back into position to be useful. You know what? One, two, some of the battalion. So I'm lined up to take one damage this turn. But now I have this entire armada over here. That has to work. That has to do it. Oh no, I lost a bunch of energy on these draws. Okay, gaining defense. I guess I'm taking three damage this turn, so it helps keep me at an equilibrium. <laughs> Drones and missiles instantly take a turn. Um, I'm going to move a space over, take a basic shot, and then radio control. And I want to lose more health still, and I want to lose more heat, so I'll heat sink back. Mmm, a dangerous amount of uh, health now. I kind of just want to pass and take all this damage. Incoming is three, it'll help me lower my stuff again at least. Unfortunately, it's still giving me these oxygen leaks. I've got a flex move and parallel shift. I've got to start getting my aggressive units actually over here to work. And in fact, I'm going to cause four damage this turn by using two drone shift to move them over. Let's slug the enemy. And then again, line up for more damage. Obviously burn out the oxygen leak. Single attack drone and turn and that'll do it. Bye bye Spike Jr. Missile shots. Instantly calls the missile to take its turn. I can see the value in that. Volatile vapor, low shield capacity. I definitely can't do that with the uh, prototype 22 in the deck. Another copy of Heatsink, honestly, if they were zero if it was already upgraded to B0 costs, I would be all aboard that. Missile shot A. I worry I don't have enough damage without something like a missile shot still. I'm gonna skip. Hull plating, permanently gain plus three max hull and heal three on pickup. Huge. Uh, Serenity drawing more cards. Heatsink being zero cost. Certainly a, uh, a viable one there. There's also the, a bubble field that gives me some drone shift, which would make it a lot more playable. I just also feel like I kind of need more energy, which means making flex move one cost certainly provides more energy, so does the heat sink upgrade, in fact. I'm taking the heat sink upgrade. Oh boy, it's you.
Okay, I want to prevent you from giving me a card, so I want to set a stun shot on that area. How do I do that? I would have to fire a scatter shot that doesn't hit anything and miss. Oh no, I can't do it. Can I? No, I can. Okay, if I move one over, I'm lined up to take a big hit by the, the, to the cockpit, brittle cockpit. And then I would fire a basic shot, which would alternate my cannon. So I have a scatter shot lined up for the cannon. It would move two spaces to the right. I would move two spaces to the left. And then I'd be able to also develop an attack drone. I like that. So I move one space over, I fire a basic shot. I use a scatter shot afterwards, canceling the intent to give me things, and then I summon an attack drone. Ooh. Hello, buddy. Brittle, uh, brittle counter right there. Love to see it. Um. Yeah, I'm probably going to end up using a basic dodge and moving one space over, but let's see what's in the cards for us. Oh, wow, I'm not even going to have to use the basic dodge to do that. I still will use the basic dodge, mind, but it, I won't be doing it for that intent. I'll use the heat sinks instead for that reason. Uh, basic block, basic dodge and a parallel shift. Just gain as many resources here as I need for future encounters and turns. Hmm. I could just bubble field and corrupted core here. It does feel difficult not to try and play the battalion, though. Unfortunately, I can't play the battalion because imagine the movement I would have to commit to. Um, yeah, bubble field. Bubblefield also has the benefit of hitting all of these asteroids, which I'm also a big fan of. I just realized the big problem here. I need to take this hit. <laughs> oh no. Well, that changes things, certainly. I got too much, uh, too much armor at the moment. So I'm going to use Corrupted Core and Bubble Field, but I'm going to move them one space over so that I actually take this hit. There's Mitosis to save us from that in the future. Also got a casual drone control, do two damage to the enemy. It's piercing, so I don't have to worry about the enemy's armor in that position. And I will parallel shift to block everything as well as gain a drone shift for a future turn. And yeah, I probably want to alternate back to the main enemy, so I'll fire a block shot. Uh, we missed. I intended to do that, Isaac, don't worry. Uh, hot compress to get us some extra health here. Love it. And I'm fine losing the drone this turn, so... Well, am I? No! If I'm using EMP slug this turn, I don't need to. Okay. So it's hot compress. Check it and see. We move the enemy one space over, or rather we move the drones one space over, I heat sink to move myself one space over as well as lose another heat, and then line up my EMP slug for six damage against the brittle position and prevent them from doing any damage back to me. We also still connect through with our living drone. Speaking of the drone living, 
can use a bubble field here to guarantee that the drone does. And I want to. Now if I use a basic dodge and move one space over, I can also avoid taking all but two damage here. I could basic shot scatter shot here in order to do four damage to the enemy as well as prevent them from doing anything to me. It just feels like a, a worse... Well, I guess I could scat... It doesn't matter if I, I stun the enemy, right? If I scatter shot, I'm already getting away from them. So I might as well give them an attack drone's worth of damage. But the attack drone's worth of damage will be two. Because the enemy will offset. So it's the same as using the basic shot in that instance. Basic shot, scatter shot. Oh no. I forgot about the alternate. I forgot about the alternate and that's gonna... Mm, well, I just took my own damage off the field. Probably not what I wanted to do though, right? Probably not. I want to EMP through this turn. I know I'm not doing damage to the enemy, but I'm not going to be able to gain more resources than I have to expend to avoid an awful, awful circumstance on that turn. I think I have to accept taking some damage this turn, though. If I heat sink, I can move across and then summon the battalion. I can have them all instantly take a turn as well. Which will give me a shield. I can cause myself to only take three damage. Three? Four? What? I don't know how I miscalculated that as badly as I did. I was certain I was only going to be taking uh, three damage this turn. Alas, I'm going to be taking four hull damage. Oof. All right, it's time for a bubble field, and then I get out of dodge. I'll still be taking a damage under the hull this turn, but I've lined myself up now with a much more potent way to deal with this enemy. Let's give all the drones the ability to immediately take a turn. And then launch an attack drone. And burn an Abyssal Visions out of the deck as well. Unfortunately, the shield drone is actually missing me with all of its hits. Okay, if I use flex move now, I can drone shift across to completely block the enemy's incoming everything. I can heat sink out of the way to lower my heat again. I can gain even more basic block. While doing a huge amount of damage to the enemy. And also, in fact, setting up a kill on him. Get him radio control. I need to go to a shipyard and heal, though. Freeze dry. Ignores all shields and armor that locks the enemy ship so it can't move. There's also Firewall B for more defense and temp shield. There's also Flashpoint. Your heat in damage, then instantly end your turn. Yeah, I don't really want any of those. 
freeze dry, the ability to lock the enemy for a couple of turns, move away. I mean... Do I want to freeze dry the enemy? I can lock them in a position where they have to continue taking damage to my turrets. Yeah, sure. Photon Condenser. All of Dizzy's cards do one more damage. Dizzy only has one card that does damage in block shot. Then there's Crosslink. Every fifth time you attack, gain and evade. That's going to be the one we go for. Yeah, I'm just going to repair the hull here. As much as I want to do anything else for value's sake, I've got to rest before the boss. Hmm. Good to have my Tosas already. Let's Serenity to see my hand. I'm going to scatter shot the enemy. Perfect. So I've got incoming two damage this turn, but I've got a stun shot. So all I have to do is mitosis and then freeze dry, and I'm no longer taking damage. And I'm also now taking care of my mitosis effect. Grand. And I'll alternate so that I am correctly targeting the enemy for the next turn. Radio control. Ooh, Battalion. And Hot Compress, even. Nice. I do want to get the Battalion out, but I can't really save them from anything right now. Like, they do a decent amount of damage, and then they disappear. As much as I want to use Hot Compress, I think that's for a future turn. Which actually probably locks me out of playing EMP Slug this round. Oh no it doesn't, because I've got Heat Sink. Never mind, so I'm still good. Uh... Let's move one space over, launch the Battalion. Now I'm only going to be losing the shield drone. I take two damage, which is fine. If I use the heat sink, I would have to lose five damage. Or rather, I'd have to take five. One against my hull. I'm not going to do that. Oh, cool. definitely time for the EMP here. That's what it was made for. Cancel all enemy intents, remove all of their shielding, and then my drone gets to take a free shot. Looks like my drone is also going to be concussing their missile bay, and I can get another drone to concuss the other part of the missile bay, so just... The, 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 the more things that something can accomplish for you, this drone is doing damage, it's protecting me on this line against any incoming damage, and it's preventing the enemy intent that would destroy itself. So good. Drop that attack drone out on the field. Incoming damage this turn is three. I should make sure that I have the ability to weather that with a shield surge and a basic block. There's the hot compress. Ooh, bubble shield as well. Wow. I'm definitely going to heat sinks and hot compress. 
So the incoming damage meter this turn is now four. So I can block fully with the hot compress. And then bubble field to keep my drones out on the field. I really wish I could have played flex move either the first time I got it recently or that time because now I am locked. Uh, ooh, attack drone. Incoming damage this turn is only one. Don't really need to worry about that. Let's use the Corrupted Core to alternate, send out an attack drone to block the incoming damage from the enemy, gain a basic dodge. Very glad to have found some time to do that. Do six damage to the enemy, concussing two of their shots, and now, because we have piercing damage on the field, I already win. Get them, drones! That's a fun card. So wait, thermal batteries all over you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hello, thermal battery. Zero energy for gain two energy and gain two heat. I often do want more energy in an individual turn. The unfortunate thing is I also don't have card draws. So unless I draw that with a very specific hand, I could go wanting. There's also another copy of Serenity, and then finally, From Hell's Heart. Attack damage, sorry, cost three. Attack damage equal to your missing hull. I can either do that and also heal one, or lose all but one hull, then attack for damage equal to my missing hull. Wild. I'm taking the thermal battery. Shield burst. Anytime you gain shield, gain one temp shield. So that means every turn with Prototype 22, I gain a shield and a temp shield. And then if I have my Tosis out, it turns the shield I got into two more temp shield. That's three temp shield a turn. That's really, really... Salvage arm! Gain one energy every time you destroy a mid-row object. And then Warp Mastery for uh, upgrading the Warp Prep for an additional two shield and two evade on the first turn. I'm taking the shield burst, obviously. It's so synergistic here. How do you turn that down? Okay. I just want to gather resources this turn. So I'm looking for a... I mean, realistically, flex move, parallel shift, If I move over with the heat sink, I have to take uh, four damage, six damage. That's way too much damage. All right, I'm fine with where we currently are then. Take a block shot, pass the turn. Mm, thermal battery, I can play that now. Unfortunately, the heat sinks is behind me though. I don't really need the extra energy this turn. That's sad. Mm. Let's throw a basic dodge out on the field. Move one space over and send out a basic shot, I think, as well. I'm intending to take damage this turn so I can keep my shield low enough such that the shield burst doesn't bite me on the butt. Ooh, summon a drone, instantly give it a turn. Love that. Let's play the Serenity first, though, unless I want the drone to be summoned in the position. Which might be the case, actually. I might not even want to play Serenity this turn. Some of the attack drone. Do I really want to pay two to give it a bubble? That's what I'm currently looking at. 
quite closely as well. I'm doing it. Do to give it a bubble. Instantly take a turn. Pierces under the enemy as well. I'm gonna take three damage. Leaving me with one shield. Perfect. Definitely time for mitosis. And then that'll alternate so that I can line up an EMP shot on the enemies incoming three. I heat sink one across, setting up a battalion, and then all I have to do is move one back to the left in order to prevent all incoming damage. This turn I actually would like to play the thermal battery and DMP slug, but I can't play both because that's uh, too much heat. Dang. Oh, fun though. I can just stun the space that is going to give the enemy a buff and then use my basic shot to stun the other part of the enemy that was going to hit me. There's the Serenity here. That's pretty much exactly what I wanted. I'm gonna go one, two spaces over, summon another attack drone, and then bubble them all. This is exactly the lineup I want. Four different attack drones with bubbles on them, and then the only shot that's persisting through them is hitting my empty space. Also, for what it's worth, this is enough damage to take out the enemy. Hmm. I don't need Seer or Desperate Measures or Stun Source in this deck. I'm gonna skip them. Hit an unknown signature. Is anyone else getting a really bad headache? Uh, no, it's from that high-pitched static? What is that? Ah, uh, you all again. Hello! Which of you shall I teach this time? Obtain one of two Dizzy, Isaac, or Drake cards. Ah, right. Uh, a pick from, uh, from, from one of you, okay. Hmm, I probably want heat reduction from Drake more than I want anything else at the moment. Maximum armor increase is not bad for Dizzy, but I'm eventually not using it. Drake. Oh, I'm s prevented from skipping a card reward. These are both uh, give heat. These, this is the opposite of what I was asking for, thank you very much. Um, I'll take the hot compress A, because in the worst case scenario, if it heals my hull and also makes me overheat, it paid for itself. Ugh, get out of my head! Worry not, it is not my place to share your secrets. Shut up! Energy readings are back to normal. Hmm. If I'm going to fight you, I'm going to fight you at the very end of the run. Because I, I, I want to benefit from you in this space. Bubble field is needed to get the, the additional two move on it there. For a long time. Okay, donkey. So this is the Rusting Colossus. The Missile Bay, the enemy corrodes itself. So yeah, it just has a ridiculously large amount of health and I just have to outlast it. 
And because of the way that, you know, poisoning yourself works, it's possible I could fight the entire time and still do less than the poison will ultimately if I just defend myself. Which means I'm now in the realm of trying to just take uh, as little damage here as possible. Um, so that's a basic shot against the weak area of the enemy. Then I use flex move to get more resources. And then if I move one space over, I can block shot against the enemy's incoming four and start actually gaining some. Uh, let's use a radio control just to get back to the, the cannons I might want to use. Okay. If I launch an attack drone... It would protect me against three incoming damage. And then I could parallel shift it along as well as heat sinks myself along. And then it's protecting me against three damage here instead. But I'm not really doing anything about the cannon that's doing four, which is the real threat. need to let that four miss me like it currently is. Miss me with that four. Yeah, honestly, that's probably the best turn that I have in terms of defense. Oh boy, I would like something better though. Thermal battery would set up for an EMP slug. <laughs> It'd be nice if I could EMP the enemy for effect here. Sadly, I can't. I really don't want to stop the enemy from corroding themselves. I don't actually need to use the thermal battery as a thing. So if I just basic dodge... I mean, realistically, I just scatter shot. I just get out of the way. The enemy's still dying of their poison. Oh, sick. I can launch out the battalion this turn. Uh, Serenity. Battalion. In fact, if I move the battalion over by one, I still take no damage. But I get to hit a attack drone to a weak area, as well as instead of losing both attack drones, I lose a shield drone. Perf. If I can freeze dry the enemy there and then just get out of dodge, which I can, I can, uh, I can effectively just keep them out of combat for another turn while they corrode themselves, so freeze dry. And then I basic dodge, moving one space over and lining up a basic shot to be able to stun the six incoming. On a way, oh, I'm gonna take damage to my hull. Oops. Flex move. I'm gonna move my turret into space and then launch another attack drone, fire both of them at the enemy. 
and then I don't need to take another hull damage. Well, I need to... I either take two hull damage or I take... Yeah, I either take two hull damage... Oh, no, wait! I would have taken the hull damage at the start of the next turn to the uh, prototype, so I should have uh, actually let that happen. Boulder Bundle A. Gain three drone shift and three pebbles. Pebbles are zero costs that launch an asteroid from the bay. I I like that. There's a lot of value in that. Flashpoint and Volatile Vapor we've seen before and I didn't want them then. I don't want them now. Shield Memory. Your shield lasts between combats or Grazer Beam. Every time an attack misses the enemy by exactly one space, the enemy still takes a damage. An attack. I don't think my drones will count for this. Drones that attack. Well, an attack. Uh, yeah, maybe my drones will. Shield memory is objectively probably bad for me here. Taking Grace Beam. Hello there. Would you like to engage in the some debate? Talk about my shoes. I've got nothing but time on my hands. We can do this over and over. Uh, I can turn an upgrade A into a B, or a B into an A. And gain an annoyance for doing so. Well, I think there's actually value in that. Thermal battery B, I think I would prefer to be thermal battery A. Draw me a card. Uh, radio control changing. Don't really care about that. Boulder, do you want to change? Boulder bundle B would give me a pebble A. No, I prefer the drone shift. Yep. No, I feel pretty good about that. Uh, so I only want to alternate the thermal battery. Oh, it's an upgrade B. There we go. We could do more if you'd like. No, thanks. Well, goodbye now. Take an artifact. The cockpit lock on. All enemy cockpits start weak. The enemies are firing from empty spaces. Intriguing. I'll flex move, summon an attack drone lined up with the enemy, get another basic dodge to offset the one I'm about to spend. Moving to the left there. Don't get to play heat sinks, unfortunately. Ooh. I do want to send the battalion out. So let's do it. A serenity to alternate the firing mechanism here. I'll move one space over, send out the battalion so that I'm not lining up my attack drones to hit the empty part of the enemy and I'm blocking with the shield drone that that's generating. So I'll get to do six damage here. Six, sorry, two. And now I need to consider taking some damage to the enemy, as otherwise I am going to overload. Uh, bubble field and parallel shift seems like a great idea, though. Bubble field, parallel shifts. Unfortunately, this will also carry a card that it'll give me for the hit. But I'm no longer going to lose hull to the max, so happy about it. All drones and missiles instantly take a turn. Obviously, I want to move these one space over to use the radio control. Incoming damage from that cannon this turn would be six. That's a bit steep, but I think I have to take it. So I'll use a shield surge to prepare against it. And then a fear... Yeah, got four damage already going out towards the enemy. Pop the hot compress, absolutely. Fire a block shot, and then the enemy's dead. Smooth moves. Small boulder, refresh, interval. 
for temporary shield and energy next turn, as well as the explosive slug. I'm happy to skip those. Time for the final elite. Ah, hello. It's you. Uh, well, yeah, I want to do as much setup as I possibly can on this turn, so thermal battery. Oh, flex move, boulder, and mitosis on the first turn. That's wild. Oh, that's so much setup on turn one. Summon a pebble, and then another pebble, and then I'll move those one space over and summon another pebble. A bubble field. Oh, it's so good. Uh, I will heat sink. I'll parallel shift and I'll use a bubble field. Oh, that's a lot of resources gained there. I have seven drone shift ready for the future. Serenity before a hot compress. Or rather serenity before an attack drone and then a hot compress. If I just moved one to the left, that'd be fine too. Like I could literally just move the asteroids over even. Enabling me to use a block shot here. Okay, I like that. The giant impact of a single drone shift right there. Okay. Hot compress that I can't use. This one's too spicy. If I line up scatter shot, I think I'll be happy. but I'll cause myself to take damage. So I should set up with the shield surge. Then scatter shot the enemy to move them out of position and me out of position as well. I'll take five to my temp shield here, but I still get to connect my damage from the attack drone. Incoming this turn is nine. Ooh, I definitely want to launch the battalion. Oh my god. Battalion launched. I don't want to tell you. I wanted to do it, so I did. And now, incoming three damage on me. Definitely gonna send out a flex move right now. And then another basic dodge thereafter, and I'm just gonna get out of dodge. Take only four damage. Still dealing five with my drones that turn. And use the heat sink to set up for a scatter shot. And then if I move one more space to the left, I can use a basic shot to prevent the incoming eight. So now I've only got five, which is no hull damage, but it also doesn't matter because the drones take the enemy out before it. Refresh interval A or another bubble field? Oh, is that too much? I don't think so. I really want them. Pressure fuse. While your hull is at under half its max, all of Drake's cards deal plus one damage or overclock generator and energy every third turn. Thank you. Oh boy. I mean, look, the run is pretty good. 
Do I fight the shopkeeper now? This is the last opportunity this run I have. And Drake's on the squad. I don't want to lose here, but when am I going to be better prepared? Let's try it. Huh. <laughs> uh -huh. You realize you're in a time loop and the first thing you try to do is attack the shopkeep? This ain't my first rodeo, buddy. Let's do this. Oh! <laughs> okay, okay. That's... Are you kidding me? Oh no. <laughs> uh, so I can... I, I have to... I have to assume that surviving the first turn is enough to help me in some significant way and play the EMP accordingly. Uh, let's use Thermal Battery first. Mitosis is great. I'll pop out a parallel shift to be ready for future turn. Well, actually, the annoyance removes itself entirely from the deck. But I'm probably not surviving this fight if I have the right read of this. I want to play parallel shift and then EMP the enemy, removing all of their shields as well as their intents. Oh my god. I... Oh boy, I don't know if I can do anything about this if that's what the enemy is capable of doing every turn. Well, I had to do it to, to figure that out though. Okay, let's boulder bundle. Then I'll shield search for defense's sake. Send out a pebble directly ahead. I'm not going to be able to de develop any offense while I'm doing this. Oh, wow. Wow. I mean, look, I, I knew, I knew, I had to know. This was always going to be threatening. Okay, so if I summon a pebble... No, wait. If I move them... And then summon a pebble... And then summon another pebble... And then move them over one more space... I can take only eight damage this turn. Oh god. Well, that's the best I can do. Oh, come on. Okay, so I need something truly absurd to overcome this kind of a fight. Got it. Glad to have learned that lesson right now. Uh, yeah, I, I can't do anything about this. I'm gonna die to it. Took two of them out. And that one ends in a defeat. Alas. 
We tried our absolute hardest. I wonder if, if I want to actually take out that fight, if I'm going to have to explore going back down to a lower difficulty so that I can try and wrangle it. Because right now, I can't even really imagine the run that is in the position to do something about that. Like, you'd have to have full counters. So, like, you know, all missiles reverse their target, something like that. Is that something you can get? Who knows? For the moment, though... We have found 40 artifacts, which means we unlock a new ship, the Jupiter. And the Jupiter has a com or rather is a comms vessel with no cannons of its own. It launches special Jupiter drones, which channel its attacks. It's got warp prep as a basic, and then Jupiter drone, hub rather. Uh, at the start of combat, gain a Jupiter's moons. Jupiter's moons launches an object from your attack bay, and then the Jupiter drone, every time you attack it, copies your attack. Excited to give that a go in the next episode, but until then, let me just say in the mind of Drapsy, the name of the game has been Cobalt Core. Top left is a series playlist from my content on the game past, present, and future. YouTube break my nations down below, streaming past. Are the names of the people so generously supporting the Republic on Patreon.com slash Rhapsody Plays. I don't bother to thank you. Special thanks to this episode to Disney Mia. Hopefully, you'll have been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully, we'll see you all next time. <laughs>